problems in life, little stuff that, something that we like take for granted. Maybe I got a flat tire. Stuff like that don't, don't seem so huge anymore. Hey, 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 hey. Then you go through something like this, you're like, a lot of those things that you worry yourself about and those issues are not as big as you think they are. And you gotta go through something like leukemia. You know, that now that's something that's real. It's something that it really, really affects you. I got five brothers and two sisters. The oldest, Joslyn, then after her it's Ali, and then Tyrell, then Alea, then it's me, and then it's Avion, Jaden, and Anthony. We were always competitive. We all played sports, and for the most part, we all went D1. My sister, my older brother, he played football, and my older sister, she ran track. My younger brother's at Charlotte right now. We were so heavy in the sports. That just always kept us like so close and made us compete. Started playing sports with him since second grade, tackle football in sixth grade. He always put me under his wing. He always gave me good advice when it comes to things. I can ask him anything. Everything I do, Jaden want to do it, you know, and he want to do it better. Sort of like the little brother look up to the big brother. They always bonded, whether it's playing the video games or, you know, riding the bicycles together. We're on a college visit down to Georgia Tech. And he just kept saying, like, his head hurt and he's not feeling good. I started having headaches and coming home after practice, not even eating, going straight to sleep, hardly could shower. And we were just like, okay, well, you know, take some Tylenol. And he was like, nah, my head really hurting. My head really hurting, you know? So then that's when my dad was like, oh, well, let's just take him and see what's wrong with him. I was just thinking maybe it was from being in the sports, you know, doing basketball and track and football, maybe just tired after practice, just started being a consistent thing. His mom took him to get checked out, and that's when they said, you know, something with the blood count is like off. They sent us down to the Columbus Children's Hospital, and that's when they gave us the diagnosis. Then they just broke it down to him, you know, that he had acute leukemia. instant shock and then they ended up starting treatment like that that next day which was like thanksgiving they told me not to look it up because of course as a kid i looked it up i'll admit it i really didn't think of it because i felt fine i just sat in silence first thing i did i picked up the phone i called my dad and i'm just like so what what's what now like what are they gonna do now what's what's the treatment like how are we gonna make him better you know that was my first thoughts james is the one that called me and told me and I didn't hear no crackling in his voice, no nothing. So I'm just like, how are you this strong? And I just started busting out crying. Like, it was too much. Because, like, my brothers mean everything to me. In the first month of treatment, I was losing a lot of weight. I wasn't eating. Um, I got down to 63 pounds. It was a lot of back pains, a lot of medication I had to take every day, a lot of hook up to wires and getting blood every day. I would gain weight and then I would lose weight. So it was just a lot of things that they would try to get me on different type of protein shakes, get calories in me. They said the taste buds would change and they weren't lying. I didn't, I was an eater, so I didn't really like eating at that time. It was a lot of mixed emotions um, in the beginning. I dealt with a lot of depression at the time. It was hard on my parents, hard on my mom. I had to stay in the house for like a month, didn't really talk to nobody. It was just like a thing that would just like change my whole life, never know what would happen next. Sometimes when you, you, someone got an illness or something, they may feel lonely or not a part of everything. You know, and Angelo wanted him to still be a part of everything that we started before. I had him on the sideline. He was our captain. Like he, he used to come out for coin tosses, and he was like our designated captain. So he was out there with us all the time. That's where he was supposed to be, anyways. You know. So for him to get sick and not being able to be out there, it's like my duty to have him out there with us. He looked up to me a lot. So I felt like everything I was doing, I was doing it for him now. 
y'all just came together. It wasn't a grieving thing. It was more of a, we strong, we together. He gonna be strong and we gonna get through this. Once he started getting to, into treatment, we knew what it was. He wanted him to come to his final college visits and be a part of his final decision. Once Jaden was able to get back out on the road, he was still going through extensive treatments, but I think Angel just knew that he was gonna come through and then they can continue that journey together again. I feel like that kept Jaden in a good spirit. You can get through all this that's going on and you'll be here one day. I feel like he wanted to keep his mind on like everything positive. Going on the visits just like really helped him. He been on every last one of them. I don't know the number, but yeah, he was there for all of them. He didn't miss not one. Jaden just always used to be like, everything gonna work out, you good. So like him, him telling me that and him being so young, it's like, dang, he telling his big brother that. So it's like, dang, I gotta listen. Like I do got it. And it just gave me a confidence. He really played a big part in where I went. It really was his decision more than it was mine. I mean, I played a little decision with, you know, relationship with coaches and that, but for the most part, it was his choice. I was happy that my brother wanted to bring me along. I did a lot of things a lot of people couldn't do. Visit a whole bunch of colleges, his official visit with Michigan State, that was fun. It was just like, Angela, you really did it. You, you completed your goal, so now go, go do what you need to do. I'm definitely glad he picked this, for sure. King wants more than just the hitch, but it is picked off. Sensational stop by Sparty. Interception by Angelo Gross. He did three years of treatment with cancer. He was so strong and so tough, like, that never even crossed my mind that I could even lose him because he was so tough. I was up here, I had just got out of practice, and they told me they were going to ring the bell. So I was like, FaceTime me and call me. I, I wanna, I wanna, I'm not there, but I want to feel like I'm there, you know? So my sister, she FaceTimed me. You know, he rang his bell. It was the best thing ever, really. I was relieved. It brought us all closer. His ribbon, it was Jaden Strong above it, and we all got it. We all got it tatted on our body somewhere, like almost everybody in my family. So we all got the matching tattoo, like Jaden Strong, because he was strong. I've always felt like a source of motivation for him ever since I've gotten sick. I told him to always push through and do what he needs to do, and does what Angelo does. I look up to Jaden all the time. Now he's back on the football field, so like, and, and he sent me his plays and his clips. So it just be like, Man, he went through all this and he's still out there, he's still going. So it's like, all these little injuries I try to play through, it's like, man, I could do it, he did it. Like, I definitely look up to him for sure. I feel like we really use that as like, don't take anything for granted. Cause you never know the next day anything can happen. Tonight, we have the Indiana Hoosiers taking on the Michigan State Spartans. The Spartan squad that is undefeated in Big Ten play. Team on one, one, team. Ranked for the first time since 2009. Both squads looking to come out with an important win as the Big Ten schedule is waning down. DeBoe will take the ball up the right hand field. Sargent on her right hand looking for the through ball. DeBoe keeping it. Now plays Sargent. Sargent serves it in. And it's a goal for MSU. Sargent with the serve. And a beautiful header. MSU now on the attack. Two against. And a shot. No goal. And it was a close opportunity there. Weber with the cross. And a shot. Everybody back. And a save there by Kozel, an important one at that. Michigan State will move to 11, 1, and 3, remain undefeated in the Big Ten.
Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Mon Ice Arena on the campus of Michigan State University. It's a Thursday night, but it's hockey night in the capital city. Michigan State getting ready to open up a two-game home set against the Riverhawks of UMass Lowell. This is a good team coming into Mon Scott. This is going to be a good early season test. We've got to put 60 minutes together. This is going to be a tough physical series. We are underway. Michigan State wins the opening draw. Riverhawks coming down into the Michigan State zone. They feed it out in front, and it's tipped in for a goal. UMass Lowell opens the scoring here in the first period. We are back to five-on-five hockey. Yes! Goal! Oh, how about that? It's an even strength goal. Muka with the tip and his first goal as a Michigan State Spartan. Let's keep it in off the draw. Hey! Goal for Michigan State. That one, no question. Miroslav Muka yeah. gives the Spartans the lead. 42 seconds apart. Michigan State doing a great job on the draw here in this first period. 18 wins to only seven losses. Onto the stick of door. Yes! Shot from the far side. Oh, oh. For Michigan State. Christian Krieger gets in the act. Make it three to one, Michigan State. And the Spartans will take a lead into an intermission for the first time this year. River Hawks back to pick up the puck. Back into the Michigan State zone on the far side. Brian Chambers got it out in front. Shot and a goal for Mass Lowell. Power play goal for the River Hawks within the first minute here, taking advantage of that power play opportunity. Scott with the bank off the backboards, just a good bounce. You look at the shots on net here in this second period. Michigan State right now with only one. A whole turnaround there compared to that first period. The shot rings off of the post. And gets behind Dylan St. Cyr. We're tied at three all. Well, not in the first minute like they did in the second period, Scott, but close enough here. 1846, still a go here in the third period. Come on. And now a takeaway at the blue line by Kelly. Kelly down the middle, got a man on him, goes to the back end, tried to get the shot off. Penalty will be called against Mass Lowell as St. Cyr heads back to the Spartan bench. There we go. I was wondering what the delay was there, Scott, and I was thinking, could they be calling a penalty shot here? How about that? Interfered with from behind. Tanner Kelly comes to the right, into the zone, to the right circle. Digs on the front shot. Goal! Wow! Beautiful dig by Tanner Kelly, and then he goes upstairs on the backhand. I'll tell you what, he did a great job of handling that puck. And the Spartans are in the lead with 8.24 to play. By the River Hawks and into the zone on the right wing. Shot from the far boards taken, glove save made. And there goes Griggles, extra attacker coming out on the ice. Blast from there, knocked down in front, tipped into the far corner, nine seconds to play. River Hawks keep it alive from the top of the right circle, down to the goal line right side. Still loose out in front, bounces around, loose on the... Hey! And hey! the Spartans will pick it up and win the game. Woo! Wow. The Way final up. score... Michigan State 4, UMass Lowell 3. Having to defend a 6 on 4 there, and they hang on, doing a great job of really crowding that middle win against the 16th ranked UMass Lowell team. Welcome to East Lansing, and today it's homecoming. And it's Michigan State hosting the Badgers of Wisconsin. It's beautiful out here. The trees have turned. Very comfortable outside for a mid-October football Saturday. Happy homecoming, Spartan fans. This, folks, is homecoming afternoon in East Lansing. Go Green! Go Green! The 106th homecoming game with the Wisconsin Badgers in town. Don't let anybody tell you what you can and what you can't do. If you believe it, then that's what you can do. (laughs) 
Well, Wisconsin will put it in play. Now the pressure's on the Spartan defense. Good field position for the Badgers. Allen is stopped behind the line this time by Simeon Barrow. Watch him reach and slam and beat those two defenders that are trying to block him. In out of the eye. Allen, nice. touchdown. Braylon Allen, his seventh of the year. Fourth and goal. Spartans trying to tie it up. Just under a minute and a half to play in the first. Hand off to Elijah. And he will be stymied. Hit at the one and driven back. Wisconsin will take over on downs. Second down and 10 for Wisconsin. Just inside their two-yard line. Mertz under center again. Play fake to Allen. Stands in the end zone. Pick. Throws right side. It's picked off. A great pickoff by Jacoby wow. Winman falling down at the 12-yard line. Here's the lone setback. That's Reed in motion. Come back the other way. It breaks three for Bordner. It's a touchdown. Nowakowski in front of Braylon Allen in the eye and Allen takes this hand off off left guard goes in standing up here's the snap to Peyton steps back to his three has time to throw there throws over the middle crossing pattern catch made by Jaden Reed at the 35 jumps over a man as he runs to his right virtual deadlock we're in for a nice second half here because Mertz was surveying and going through his checkdowns and did not feel it coming. Well, he Charles Bradley for the yep. big time corner cat blitz. A delayed blitz, too. Play fakes to Allen to the right, throws it left side, and oh, a big tackle made on Shimray DK by the X man, Xavier Henderson, at the five. Second and ten. Merch looping it for the corner, and it is incomplete. What a play defensively. Wow. Magnificent job by Mere Speed. Michigan State with the football. The ball is at the three-yard line. They're 97 away. Car on the line of scrimmage. Hunt on the wing. Play fake by Peyton Thorny. Has time to throw. Open. Fires over the middle. Caught on the run by Malik Carr. He's at midfield. He's at the 45. Now the 40. Angling for the far left sideline. Breaks a tackle. Stays on his feet inside the 10. Handoff to Elijah Collins. Head down. Straight ahead. Into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. That was a 97-yard yep. drive, big fella. That's what I'm talking about right there, George. The offensive linemen love to see that. It's been a hard-hitting game here. Has it ever. Classic Big Ten battle. Second and eight as we open play in the fourth. Allen the setback out of the game for Lurch. A lot of pressure. Yep. And he goes. Off the edge, Simeon Barrow Jr. Mertz steps back to throw. This time throws it out left side to a tight end. Great block tackle by Angelo Gross on Jack Eschenbach at the 33-yard line. Second down and eight. He'll snap it in a hurry. Peyton Thorne winds up. Goes to the right pylon. Oh. Jump catch. Keon Coleman. Down he comes with it. Touchdown, MSU. Skyler Bell in motion left to right. Hand off to Allen. And Allen is shoved back as he hits the line of scrimmage. Listen to this crowd. Yeah, some energy on the sideline, too, with the players. First looks and looks, throws back corner oh, of the end man. zone. And it is caught for a Wisconsin touchdown. So guess what, folks? We're going to overtime. Motion Jaden Reed left to right. Jaden wants to throw it. He's got a man at the goal touchdown. line. Jump catch made for a Spartan score by Keon Coleman. Touchdown, MSU. Takes the snap. Has some time. Oh. Fires. It's caught inside the five. And down oh, goes Shimmery oh. DK across the goal line for a touchdown for Wisconsin. Wisconsin at the Spartan 25, of course, as we start the second overtime. First and 10. Hand off to Allen. Ball came out. Hit down at the line of scrimmage. Is the ball loose? Yes. Yes, it is. And guess who's got it? Yes. Deshaun Mallory. Snap back to Peyton. Lines up and throws to the end zone. He came down with it. He got it. Jake Reed. Touchdown, MSU. The Spartans win their homecoming game. Incredible. Spartans win over Wisconsin in double overtime.
Peyton Thorne, and why not? The Jaden Reed caught it over Ricardo Hallman. And the Spartans can celebrate a most important homecoming win. Beautiful, beautiful ending to a hard-hitting Big Ten game. Victory for